I want you to, there's a testimony that yes. you have. You have been attacked. Yes. Yourself. Yes. And I want you to talk about your testimony. Help somebody. Yes. Because we're, we're in the atmosphere right now where people are, can get, this is, this is it. Yes. People are waiting. I don't know if you're waiting on something to happen. I don't know if you're waiting for the most miraculous mm -hmm. thing to happen right now, like you're waiting for the next big right. thing. And that's the problem that I have, Pastor. Right, right, right. Hutchins is that we, we're waiting around because we're so program-oriented. So you're wondering, is the praise team going to sing next? Right. Is this going to happen? No, the big thing has already happened. Wow. Hallelujah. You missed it. Is that we're in his presence. That's where, that's where things happen. Yes, 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 yes. Talk about what he yes, delivered you from. Yes, well, I, first of all, I know it's ordained of God for me to be here tonight. Yeah. It was December of last year. Yes, sir. I was up preaching, and I got really sick mm -hmm. in front of the congregation. Packed out church, and I got sick. I mean, vomiting sick and painting sick the whole nine yards. Oh. So we went to the doctor and discovered that my kidneys were failing. My God. And they told me, they said, if it doesn't get any better, you're going to have to go on dialysis. Wow. I went back to church the next day and told the congregation what was going on. I said, all right, I need you to start fasting and praying. Why well, God? You see? Yeah. And, and I said to the congregation, I said, God is going to do one of two things. Yeah. I said, either he's going to deliver me from it or he's going to give me the grace to go through it. Wow. wow. And I said, and either way is victory. Wow. Either way is victory. And so it was January the 8th was my first day in dialysis. I had to go Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for four and a half hours. Wow. I had a catheter in my neck that drew the blood out of my body. Mm. And I never will forget it. The first day of dialysis, I was nervous. I was afraid. And I sat there this whole experience. And midway, the enemy started talking to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said to me, he said, look at you, preacher. He said, where's your God now? Yes, he said, he said, he said, you've been preaching all these years. Because I started preaching when I was eight years old. I've been preaching for 40 years. Yes, he says, but where's God now? Where is he now? I mean, he bombarded me. Yeah. But I told the devil, I said, listen, we got to get something straight right now. I said, the first thing is you will never convince me that the God I've been preaching about these last 40 years is going to leave me in the shape that I'm in. I said, so let's get that straight. And then secondly, I told him, I said, and, and here's what you got to understand. If God chooses not to deliver me, I said, I'm going to keep on preaching. I'm going to keep on serving him. And I'll still, I'll still confess he's my healer. I said, so let's get that straight. Well, what happened was I went on dialysis because when I, the first day I went back to the church to tell the church, 30 people stood up and said, Pastor, we want to be tested to give you, to see if we can be a match. But when I went to the kidney transplant center to let them know I had 30 people and they tested me because they had to clear me first, they said, well, we can't clear you because you're too bad off. You got too many toxins in your body and, and you, you just, you couldn't handle it. They said, so you've got to go to dialysis. And they said, well, go to dialysis for about four months or so, and perhaps we'll come back and, and, and recheck you and see if, if, you know. And so I went to dialysis for four months. And I preached every Sunday, taught Bible study every Tuesday night, sick, vomiting, tired, the whole nine yards. And I tell people that dialysis is 10% is physical, but 90% mental because it works on your mind. And a spirit of depression fights you every day. Every day. But I had too much word inside of me. Because when he would fight me, I'd fight back with the word. One day the enemy came to me. He fought me. He says, you're still on dialysis. I said, you know what, devil? I said, tell you what, I may be on dialysis. I said, but you see this man next to me on dialysis? He don't have legs. I said, but I got legs. I said, you see this lady over here? She's on an oxygen tank. I said, but I can breathe on my own. And then I saw them roll somebody in on a gurney. I said, they brought them in on a gurney. But when I finish, I'm going to walk out of here. I'm going to get in my truck. And I'm going to the church. And I'm going to work for God. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. That's what I told him. And so fine after four months, they approved me and says we can now start testing the, the 30 people. Well, the first group of people that they tested, they found three matches. Three matches. And the person who was in the first group that scored the highest was my wife. <laughs> my wife was the perfect match. And, and, and she's not even from America. My wife is from Belize. I'm from North Carolina. The surgeon said it, it, for that to be a match is like one in 2.5 million people. God knew 16 years ago when we got married that this day was coming. <laughs> I said I was looking for a miracle and it was in my house. It was in my house. There, there, there were times, there were times we were sitting up looking at TV and right midway of the show, I start thinking, God, will you ever give me a miracle? And right next to me was my miracle. Hallelujah. And so June... June the 24th, we did the surgery at University of Penn in Philadelphia. Yes, sir. The surgery was successful. Wow. As soon as they put the kidney in, it started working. I didn't have to go back to dialysis. Sir. It started working right away. Wow. And, and, and Lex, I remember after the surgery, they rolled my wife into my room on her bed yes. while just fresh out of surgery. Right. And we locked hands yeah. and we start giving God the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. But, but, but the devil wasn't finished. See, because you got to remember, behind every victory, there's an attack. And Satan wasn't finished. He had a final blow. They took my wife back to her room, and I'm in intensive care as they're watching me. And later on that evening, I start vomiting really bad. And after I finished vomiting, I couldn't breathe. And so I told them, I said, I can't breathe. And so they put me on a ventilator to help me breathe. And then they took an x-ray and discovered that the fluid that they had put in my kidney was leaking in my lungs and my lungs was 90% full of fluid. I was dying. I was drowning in the fluid. And so they said, they said, well, what we're going to do is, um, you know, uh, we're going to put a catheter in to help drain the fluid off your lungs. But it wasn't doing it fast enough. And so even the ventilator wasn't working for me anymore. I couldn't even breathe with that. They said, well, what we'll do is we'll, ha we'll have to put you to sleep and uh, put a tube in your throat that'll help you breathe better. When they went to take the ventilator off my mouth, my heart stopped and I died. Dead. Dead. My sisters were there, and this is what they told me because I'm dead. They running out of the room screaming and crying and hollering. My brother's dead. Brother's dead. One of the surgeons runs up to my wife's room and tells her, you know, what's going on. And she sits up in her bed. She says, he can't die. He got too much work to do. God's not finished with him. And so she told him, she says, take me to him. They put her in a wheelchair, fresh out of surgery. Her and one of the ministers of our church. And she rolled in the room. I'm flat out on the table. She took the oil and anointed me. And God spoke to her and told her in 24 hours that's going to be a turnaround. I was on the table dead, but God brought me back to life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and so my testimony, the testimony is I went in for one miracle and came out with five. The first miracle was that my wife was a perfect match. One in 2.5 million. Number two, my lungs was 90% full of fluid. But I didn't drown. Number three, my heart stopped. I was dead for two minutes. But God brought me back to life. And number four, my body retained enough oxygen. So that when God brought me back to life, I wasn't brain damaged. And then number five, in 16 hours, God turned it all around. And I'm standing here tonight to give God all the glory that he's still a healer. He's still a deliverer. He's still a way maker. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you, I, I'm, I'm 
I'm not the same. I'm not the same. I've been preaching for a long time. But I've never felt the power and anointing of God the way I feel it now. For the, two, for the two minutes that I was dead, God showed me some things that he hasn't even released me to talk about yet. But one thing I can share with you is while I was dead, I saw two giants in my room. I mean, they were giants and they were standing at the door, one on the left and one on the right, and they had on military uniforms. And all of a sudden, there was a peace that came over me that I knew everything was going to be all right. And then after God brought me back to life, I was still unconscious for several hours. And finally, when I came to, I started thinking about what God showed me while I was dead. And I couldn't help but ask God, I said, well, what were the giants? And the Lord spoke to me and said they were cherubims. He said, I placed them there to protect you from the enemy that was trying to take you out. And while I was in intensive care for two weeks, just me and God, he started ministering to me. He says, Norman, he says, I'm going to place a new anointing on your life he says because I can trust you he says because since January the 8th your first day of dialysis you never doubted me you never complained and you preached every Sunday so God says I can trust you and he said and with this new anointing he says I'm going to use you to bring healing and deliverance to the body of Christ. He says, because my people are hurting. They're hurting. And God says, we've been guilty. We're teaching them how to get bigger houses and bigger cars and more money. God says, that's okay in his place. But what's on God's heart is what do you do when tragedy hits your life? Because it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Man is born of a woman and is, full, and is a few days and full of trouble. If you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. And so God says, I want you to encourage the body of Christ and teach them the word of God so that when tragedy strikes their life, it doesn't change their opinion about who God is. He said, I'm not just God of the mountain, but I'm God of your valley. And then he gave this to me. He brought John to me. And I saw John in the spirit. When he announced Jesus. When he said behold the Lamb of God. Which taketh away the sins of the world. He recognized Jesus. As he was baptizing people. And the multitudes was there. In other words that was in his glory. But later on that same John went to prison. And while he was in prison, guess what? Jesus never visited him. Never. So finally, John sends a message to Jesus through one of his disciples. And the message is, Jesus, are you the one? Or should we look for another? In other words, in his glory, when he recognized him, he knew who he was. It was only when he was in his prison that his opinion was wavering and God says with this anointing I'm going to use you to teach the body of Christ that even in your prison you can't change your opinion about who God is hallelujah and somebody listening to me right now you're facing some major crises in your life and you don't know how you're going to come through it and you don't know when the season is ever going to change. I'm here to tell you. Every day. I would go to dialysis. And the enemy would fight me. There was a battle in my mind. But I fought back. I fought back. And I remember the day that was supposed to be my last day in dialysis. Everything went wrong. 
My temperature was, my blood pressure was high. My temperature was high. My blood was clogging in the machine. Everything was going wrong because the devil was mad. But then I remember when I was walking to the car after Dallas's, that was my last day. I had even turned around and looked at this place and I was waving goodbye, thanking God that I didn't have to go to Dallas's no more because the next day was going to be the surgery. Before I could get in my car, the phone rang. And it was my wife. And she says, baby, and I could hear it in the voice that something was wrong. She said, they canceled the surgery. My heart was falling. But what I've learned not to do is when my heart is overwhelmed. When I don't understand what's going on, I learn not to say nothing. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks. Now, we are human. We go through human emotions. But I believe it's in those critical moments that your faith got to stand up and let God know, in spite of, I still trust you. And I'm here to tell you, when I, when I got in the car, I sat there and had a moment. I said, okay, Norman, how you going to deal with this? I start thinking, well, you know, first of all, I, I said goodbye to everybody in Dallas and see you later, praise God. And now I got to go back Friday and I know the first thing they're going to say is, what happened? Yes. That's right. And I sat there and I said, you know what, God? I know you got it in control. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. Here's what he said. He said, Norman, it's delayed, but not denied. Hallelujah. And it was just another week and a half later. The surgery was done. Now, Lexi, I got to tell you this. I've, I, since the surgery, I haven't been the same. God told me, he said, I'm going to start talking in your ear. He says, and when I speak in your ear, I want you to say what I tell you. And don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. He said, because I'm going to use you to bring to. Now, I've been pastoring uh, frontline ministries for 11 years. And the first, second Sunday that I went back to preach, while I'm preaching, God started talking in my, while I'm preaching, he's, I'm saying one thing, he's saying another. And he says, call it out. And I called it out. The first thing God told me, he says, there, there are people in, the, in, the, in, our congreg in our congregation right now. He says, you're in the church, but you've called the quits on your marriage. He said, but God wants to heal your marriage. It blew me away when about six or more people came to the altar. All the Sundays we've been preaching. And God began to minister to them. Another Sunday, God told me, on my way to church, on my way to church, he told me, he says, today I want you to pray for anybody that's been molested as a child because I want to heal them. He says, they've been, ha they've been having this on too long now. I, 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 to be honest with you, I thought maybe one, or two people would come to the altar but I couldn't even count them we preaching about houses and cars and people need deliverance and the first thing God told me to tell them is you gotta forgive your offender and God said he would remove the pain and I'm telling you, I've just been so overwhelmed because he's been talking to me and he's been speaking through me to speak to the people of God. And, 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 and it has just, it has, uh, it's, it's just blowing my mind. But that's where we are now. In a season of healing and deliverance. And you said something at the beginning of this, of this service that just pricked my heart. And that is, it's time out. Yes, it's time out. For all of these gimmicks and... Sick of it. And all these things only to, to arouse the emotions of people. People are coming bound and they're leaving bound. God wants to bring deliverance to the lives of his people. And I'm a testimony tonight that I was dead, but God brought me back to life. And, and my wife is here tonight too, is by she? the way. <laughs> Yes, Where? she's in the house tonight. Where is she? There she is right there. Oh, my God. Yes, there she is, the prettiest woman in the house. Yes, she is. Oh, my God. <laughs> wow. Yes. Gorgeous. Now, she, she's bone of my bone. And for real. And, and yes.